Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and it's day 15 of my book Aline. Let's get going. So today we're going to be talking about haunted houses that can be made into books. Let's get going. So my first one is the Whaley House, that is a museum. So the Whaley House was once a private home for Thomas Whaley and his family. Unfortunately, the home was built on a site of a gruesome hanging and the victim was said to have haunted the Whaley family on the regular. Years later, Whaley's daughter Violet died. Though her spirit hasn't been spotted at the home, those of Thomas' wife have been. So I think this, uh, I think the Whaley house could work as a book. I know it is a movie, but it can also work as a book just because of the history and the, like this cult. I think the wife has been murdered by like a cult-ish family, so I think that would be a perfect idea for a book. And this was probably also the most famous one as well. It is the Lizzie, Lizzie Borden House in Fall Villa, Massachusetts. The 1892 murders of businessman Andrew Borden and his second wife Abigail in this unassuming home made headlines across the country. Andrew's daughter Lizzie was accused of killing her father and stepmother, but she was eventually acquitted in the much public publicized trial that followed. Since then, and ghosts have reported all sorts of strange sightings in the house, now a bed and breakfast. And she was eventually acquitted in the much publicized trial that followed. So, right there we already have a story that can be made into a book. There can be all kinds of plot twists and I think it will be really fun to write about. This is like my favorite haunted house and that is the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Three years after the rifle magnet, William Worth Winchester died in 1881. His widow Sarah moved into an eight-room farmhouse on the still rural outskirts of San Jose. She spent the next 38 years expanding the modest structure into this dizzying 116-room labyrinth, which has 10,000 windows, 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens, and 47 stairways. Wow! Some of which lead to nowhere. Rumors swore that Winchester built the maze like mansion to invade the ventral spirits of those killed by her husband's guns. So, I really like this house really a lot. I do want to investigate it one day, so it's really, really pretty. And we can have so many bad things happening with spirits coming out of their places, chasing people, possessing people. <laughs> so, I think it'll be a great book and a horror movie, to be honest. Now next one is arguably the, the most either famous or infamous in the sign house and that is the Adventine Vale House. In 1974, six members of the DeFeo De family were found slain in this home. Eldest son Ronald DeFeo Jr. was later convicted of murdering his parents and siblings. A year later, the Lettis family moved in but quickly moved out after reports of unexplained paranormal activity. Strange orders explained corn drafts and information that took the form of a demonic pig-like creature. So I, I actually read a book based off this, but I still think it's really, really cool, and that is The White House. For years there have been reports that The White House is a hotbed of haunted activity. Business staff and even White House residents have reported seeing the ghosts of Abraham Lincoln, Abigail Adams, and Andrew Jackson, to name a few. FDR, the White Eisenhower and Winston Churchill are among those who claim to have seen the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. More recently, the Obamas claim to have repeatedly heard strange sounds and felt the sensation of someone gnawing at their feet in the middle of the night. Oh, that's creepy. But it would be cool to risk in the White House. Like, imagine having to go to old talk when Abraham Lincoln, like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Obviously, not in that kind of talk, but you know. <laughs> It'll be so cool. My next one is Velisikia Axe Murderer House. On June 12, 1912, all six members of the Moore family and two young house guests were found bludgeoned to death by an axe in the home. Turning this bucolical setting into the scene of a grisly crime, the murderer was never found, but the house in Velisca still boasts wandering spirits, children's crying voices, and a door that still easily opens and closes. Today, my next one is Martha's Plantation. Known as one of the most haunted houses in America, the Martha's Plantation in St. Francisville is one of the creepiest places in the South. Legend has it that since the house was built in 1797, 
Thousands of deaths have occurred from illness, poisoning, and murder. My next one is the Joshua Ward House. Once home to a wealthy sea captain, Joshua Ward, the Joshua Ward House was built in 1784 and originally found owned by George Cohen, the high sheriff during the Salem witch trials. For many years, Cohen's remains were housed in the basement, though they eventually were moved to a nearby cemetery. Rumor has it that Cohen's spirit still haunts the house. My next one is the La Lamy House. One of the spookiest homes in the French Quarter, the La Lamy Mansion, was home to Dr. Louise and Delphine La Lamy, a socially prominent family in the early 1830s. Rumor has it that Delphine treated her slaves brutally, chaining the cook to the stove, ch chasing another slave girl with a whip, and causing her to jump to her death and torturing and mutilating many others in a secret attic room. The house, which was owned by actor Nicholas Cage from 2000 to 2009, has been haunted by screams of agony coming from the permissions of Delphine slaves ever since. And then, that is some dark history right there. Oh. I know it's been talking about houses, but you have to include it. That is the Franklin Castle. Built in 1865 by a Mountain family, Franklin Castle makes a spooky first impression with a sandstone exterior, round corner tower, and gargoyle embellishments. Those who have been inside the mansion, which is known locally as the most haunted house in Ohio, claim to have witnessed an eerie woman in black staring at the tower window, small children crying, and strange happenings like doors flying off hinges and spinning lights. The possible cause? Four of the TNT men children dying in the home, and owner Hans TNT man was rumored to have killed his 13 year old niece in the head of passage and his mistress in the tower. My next one is the Lemp Mansion. The opulent Lemp Mansion, built in St. Louis in the 1860s, was inhabited by the Willie Lemp family, who were wealthy brewers with a streak of a few. Four Limp family members of various generations committed, committed, three in the Limp mansion itself. Named one of America's most haunted houses in 1980, the mansion is currently a restaurant and in the office paranormal tours of the home. My next one is Careho House, Savannah, Georgia. Set on Savannah's Columbia Square, the Queen and Brick mansion was completed in May of 1892 for William and Anna Careho and their ten children. Wow. A few which of which died in the house. My next one is Chateau de Blissac, Blissac, Queens, France. The tallest building in the Lomi family, Valley, Chateau de Blissac, is perhaps best known as the site of the grisly murder of Charlotte of France. Legend has it that Charlotte, the illegitimate daughter of King Charles, King Charles the Seventh, was killed by her husband after he discovered her adulterous behavior. The Green Lady, named for the color of the dress in which she met her end, is sent to haunt the castle's tower. This is also one of my favorite, but I really do like this one. It's Bangahad Fort, India. Less than 200 miles outside of Delhi, the lush ruins of Bangahad Fort make for a curious juxtaposition against the desert landscape of Rajasthan. To this day, the estate remains largely uninhabited due to an alleged curse cast by this brown sorcerer after his advantages were rebuffed by a local princess. Oh boy. My next one is Hay House, Macon, Georgia. Sometimes called the Palace of the South, the mid 19th century Johnston Felton Hay House was commissioned by businessman William Butler Johnston. Inspired by Johnston Travers, the property was constructed in Italian Renaissance revival style and boasted a contemporary amenities, unique at the time, such as hot and cold running water, central heat, and a speaker tube. This one, I am proud to be a Canadian Picasso. <laughs> that is a Fairmont Bath Springs Hotel. A still one of Canada's historic railway hotels, the Fairmont Bath Springs, has been associated with the paranormal since its construction in 1888. One notable tale includes an unfortunate bride-to-be who immolated herself when descending the candlelit stairs in full wedding attire. The ghost bride of the fair Mont Bamsbanks, as she has since been dubbed, can supposedly still be found in the hotel's ballroom, internally waiting for her first dance. That's really sad. 
My next one is St. Augustine Lighthouse, St. Augustine, Florida. The St. Augustine Lighthouse is the first in Florida and a dark place in Civil War history when its light was removed to disrupt Union shipping. Like we cannot complete the list without the really famous hotel that made Shannon what it is today, and that is the Stanley Hotel at State Park, Colorado. This New Georgian mountain hideaway is best known as the inspiration for Stephen King's The Shining. And staff claims it's only mentioned by happy ghosts, and that nearly every room has a unique ghost story like that made from room 217, who is known to pack away guest clothing when not looking. Aw, that's really nice of her. This is one of my favorite ships ever. It might be Titanic, which is hard for me to say. I love Titanic. That is the Queen Mary of Long Beach, California. After sailing the Atlantic for more than 30 years, the Artemis Queen Mary dropped a permanent anchor in Long Beach. California in 1967. The decommissioned ocean liner resplanted when Gilded Art Deco finishings and still accept reservations. Just don't expect to get too far, with more than 50 deaths recorded aboard a ship, during her charter as a luxury liner tales abound of the Queen Mary's haunting. I know she was used in World War, I think she was also a gift for Queen Elizabeth II. Kent or the first, I can't remember, but she, the but Queen Mary was a gift, so yeah, and you can still visit Queen Mary today, but I don't know if it's closed right now because it's actually sinking, and they need a lot of money if they want to keep it up, so I hope they keep it, I don't want to see it sink, so I do want to visit it someday, so who knows, especially the famous from B340 where a lot of stuff can happen. That room has a really dark history. I think it used to be like a prison at one point before they converted it into a hotel room, which you can actually sleep in, but you have to book it way in advance. So, and I mean way in advance, because it's that popular, especially for paranormal investigators. So, I think the Queen Mary ship itself can be a good one for your book idea. And my next one actually takes place in China. I think it will still be a good movie drama as well. And that is The Forbidden City. For six centuries, The Forbidden City served as a Chinese imperial palace, which means it was home for the royal family alone, and with all their advisors and tenants and concubines. Throughout the centuries, numerous murders of power and passion have occurred within the palace walls. There's a soldier named Fat Fu who served as a forbidden city guard in the mid-1990s told the story of how two of his companions encountered a suspicious woman with long hair and a black gown. The soldiers yelled at her, but she ran away. Figuring she was a thief, they chased the woman for some distance and caught on her at the locked door. They ordered her to turn around. When she did, the men screamed in horror. The woman had no face. She was a ghost. One of my favorite places, I want to check it out. My next one is Great Wall of China. Believe it or not, it is haunted because of all the deaths that has happened. The wall stretches for more than 5,000 miles and was built to protect the Chinese Emperor from invasion by militant nomadic groups. Some sections were constructed as early as the 17th century BC. More than 1 million soldiers are estimated to have died building the wall, and many travelers have reported seeing apparitions, walking the wall or hearing the sound of marching footsteps but seeing no people. One million wall. Oh. And my last one is the Sanzu River. So I this could be real, this could be fictional, I don't not really sure, but it sounds real. It could be something just that's made up, but I think it's me also. In Japanese Buddhism, it is believed that to enter the underworld, the soul first needs to find and cross the mythical Sanzu River, River of Three Crossings, which is the boundary between the walls of the living and the dead. This river portal is believed to be located on a desolate yet holy volcano in northern Japan. Some believe the dead are accompanied on the journey to find the Sanzu River by three onyi, underworld demons, 
and faced many horrifying trials along the way, including seas of blood and attacked by ghastly birds. There are three ways to cross the river, a bridge for the good souls, a shallow section for those who are neither good nor bad, and a deep section filled with poison snakes for the evil souls. After crossing the river, the dead and the middle, when there are a number of trials and they are just as either worthy of going to Dengoku, which is heaven, or them to go to Jinkoku, which is hell. But I think it's a great idea for maybe even a fantasy book alone. So I love Sansa River just because of the whole the concept behind it. So I think it's great for a book idea, especially on the fantasy side. So those are all the haunted places around the world that could be made into books. Let me know which one is your favorite. Otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe. So you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!